Microsoft Bookings is a free um, alternative to the likes of Calendly, but effectively it's a, a very simple um, way to book appointments uh, and it synchronizes with your Microsoft 365 calendar. So effectively it allows you to send a link uh, to, a, to a client or internally and people can book meetings using that link um, and saving the back and forth of um, having to talk about availability in your calendars because on the link that you send out uh, people will be able to see your availability and book a meeting in um, when they like. So, and like I say, if you're currently using uh, Calendly, for instance, and paying for it, you might find that it's uh, going to save you money moving to bookings because Microsoft Bookings is free for anyone that's got a Microsoft 365 license. So let's jump straight into it and just show you what Microsoft Bookings looks like. So this is my homepage for Microsoft Bookings. You'll see right off the bat that we've got two settings at the front here. So you've got personal pages and shared booking pages. Um, those are the real two, two different types of, of sort of bookings that you get. Um, the personal one is a link that you can send out, which just goes for a one-on-one -on -one meeting directly with you um, to, to a client. Uh, and like I say here, so here's here's one that I've created before. This is one I use on a, on, a, on a daily basis. It's just my remote meeting link with me. Um, I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like if you send this link to a client, or to anyone, in fact. Here it looks. So it's just got my name, the type of meeting that it is, a little bit of a blurb about the meeting, how long the meeting is, and you'll see in a moment how you can configure all of those things. And then this is my availability. So this is syncing up with my calendar. So this knows when I'm free and when I'm busy. Um, and it allows people to choose the available dates in my calendar and times, select on the time and date that they want to book a meeting in for. Hit next, type the details in, hit book. Really super simple, super straightforward. But if you're the kind of person that is regularly having those conversations with people where they ask for a meeting and you go back to them and say, I'm free next Thursday, and they come back and say, I can't do Thursday, can we do Friday instead? And then you go back and forth over email for a few hours. Um, this obviously is gonna cut that right out because instead of having that back and forth, when someone asks for a meeting, just send the link, say, use the link, book in a time whenever it's good for you, uh, and they can book it straight in. Once they hit book, they'll receive a notification um, to their email client and their Outlook to, to say that it's been booked in and they'll add it to their calendar. Uh, and likewise, as soon as they put push the book button, it'll then book it in your calendar, obviously making it busy so that then the next person can't book that same time out in your calendar. So let's just go back a step and just show what that setup page looks like. So this is this is a setup page. So you can see here, we're just choosing a, a title for the meeting. You can add categories in here as well. You can just grade them if you like. By default, that's turned off. Pop in a little description about the meeting that you want to arrange. So mine's a pretty vague one here. So it just says, please arrange a meeting. Talk about all things IT, strategy, sales, and account management. Um, you can put in a, a physical location, so I could put in my office address here if I wanted to, um, but I've got this set to Microsoft Teams. You'll notice it's, it's only Teams, you don't have Zoom or anything like that because it's obviously it's a Microsoft product, so they're going to want you to use the Microsoft Teams software. Choose your duration, so you can do a custom one, just choose within 15 minute increments. Public or private, public means that if someone goes to my James page, I'll show you here. So if you choose public, it will show on your main page. So when someone goes to my James page, they'll see my public ones here. And they can choose from them. If you choose private, then it'll only be visible to the people that you send that link to. Um, you can choose which hours you want to choose, so you can either do just your regular ones or you can set custom availability plans. And you can put some buffer time zones and things in there as well. Um, you'll notice here I've got an hour before and after each meeting, just means that I don't end up having a meeting going straight into another one, um, or I book a meeting directly after when I've just finished. Uh, I also have it set so that the minimum lead time is eight hours, which means that no one can book a meeting in with me in the next eight hours. 
just to stop someone booking a meeting, eating and being not notice it's there. Uh, and then there's a maximum lead time of 90 days, that's default. Uh, and that just means that no one can book a meeting further than 90 days from the day they're booking it. You can also set some um, email reminders on here. So you can set an email reminder um, uh, to the client or whoever's booked the meeting in with you, say 15 minutes before the meeting's meant to start, you know, just to say, remember, you've got a meeting with me in 15 minutes. Uh, and then you can set a follow-up email, you know, that goes out, uh, let's say three days after the meeting that says, thanks for the meeting, and maybe some marketing information or whatever you want to do. So really, really very straightforward stuff. Um, uh, not any real customization required. Get it out of the box, turn it on, hit new meeting, um, fill out the stuff I've just shown you there, and you're done. Send the link out to people, so that's working. So really nice, super straightforward, easy to use. Um, and that's the personal bookings page. Then you've also got the shared bookings pages, which is effectively the same thing, but for groups of people rather than just one. Um, so effectively the way you set it up is you set up your organization as a shared booking page. So I've got Genmar here. Um, you've got a lot more customization here. So you can set um, some themes on here. You can do colors. Uh, you can put your logo on the booking page, um, set some default policies and all sorts of other bits there. I'll show you what mine looks like, which is this is pretty default, just out of the box. Not really set a lot up on here. Um, just got our logo, the company name on there. Uh, and just put some little contact information on the bottom here. But a bit more customization details on there. And then what you do is you set up what's called services inside there. So I've set up one test one here, just called Let's Chat About Microsoft 365. Click on the edit button so you can see that. Um, pretty similar to the personal one, but just with a bit more options. Um, so again, you've got the location, you could set a physical one or online meeting, set the duration for the meeting. Again, you've got these buffer zones. This time you can set costs for it. So you can actually set a price for the meeting. If you um, um, you know, had a consultation fee or something that you could you could make uh, ask people to pay before you book the meeting in. Um, some additional notes into the meeting. Maximum amount of attendees. And then if we go up the top here and go to availability options. Again, you've got the same uh, sort of time increments. You've got the maximum lead time and minimum lead time I talked about before and the availability, how that's set up. And then this is the slight bit that's slightly different is that um, you add all your staff in here. So, you know, you, either that's everyone or if this meeting is going to be specifically for a sales conversation, you add all your sales staff into this, into this list here. And then what will happen is if people if you tick this box here people will be able to choose which staff member they want to have that meeting with so when they go through to that booking page they'll be able to say yep i want to have a sales meeting with genmar and they'll say cool which of the which of the three sales people here do you want to have that meeting with and they can choose depending on who's available on that day um, or if you untick that what it will do is they, they choose a time and date and then by you know if you have this one assigned assign any of your selected staff uh, for an appointment what that will do is they choose, okay, you know, this 1st of June, um, I want to have a sales meeting. It will look in the calendars for those three salespeople that you've got and say, yep, Bob's available. Bob's going to have the meeting and just assign him to it, put it in his calendar. Or you can set that to say all selected staff. So it'll do the same thing, but just if it looks on June, on June 1st and finds that Bob and Sam are both free on that day, it will just put them both in the meeting. So it'll just assign everyone into that meeting that's available. So again, you can see here, this, this will be quite handy for a lot of businesses that rely on you know, on-site work, for instance. You could have this set so that your on-site engineers or your people that go out on site, um, you can put their availability, uh, sync it up on here in their Microsoft calendar and then have it so that the service they choose, they pick the service, maybe they have to pay for it, put the address in, whoever of your on-site engineers are available on that date, they can just book them in and send them straight out on site. Um, you can put some custom fields in here. So you can, by default, we've just got here um, 
there's a pretty default email address, phone number address, and uh, customer notes. Uh, and you can choose which required and which isn't. But then you can add all your own custom ones in here as well that you wanted to. You can have drop down questions or just text. Um, so again, if you were doing some sort of on-site, you know, work, you could have it to sort of ask specific questions. I don't know, is there specific access requirements or something on-site, and have that all built into this this one form here, so you've got to follow up on that afterwards. Just to show you what that looks like, then. So if we go here, pretty similar to the last one. Okay, I've not done a huge amount of customization on this. They get to see all the availability choose a date and time if you had there about selecting the um, uh, the representative then it would option here to say who, who do you want to have the meeting with they fill out those details I've talked about before if you had any more custom fields that appear here and they hit book I'll just do that right now so I'm just gonna put in some details test 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 there you go and then you get this message here. And they've got the ability to reschedule it or cancel it. Um, they'll also receive an email uh, with some of the details on as well. And again, be put into both of people's calendars. So I've got my notification to say that I've got a new booking. So I can see here that someone's booked a meeting with me, which is great, with the Teams link. And then we've also got, this is the client side, this is what the client would receive by default. Um, to say your booking's confirmed. And you can confirm, uh, sorry, you can configure what's written on this email. Uh, and then you can also go back to your bookings page and you can see um, all of the meetings that have been scheduled uh, using that, that booking system. So you've got some visibility there on the data that's going through and, and which staff and things are being booked in there. Um, it integrates into Power Automate as well so you can use that new booking um, as a trigger to then kick off a flow in power automate and for anyone that doesn't know what power automate is um, effectively it's a, um, a customizable sort of automation system as part of microsoft 365 um, that allows you to build your own flows series of events effectively that happens um, using the microsoft 365 product suite um, give you a little example as to this just as a real high level overview here's one I made made earlier so here's a power automate that I set up um, it's a bit of a silly one what it does is that when an appointment's created so when someone fills out that booking form it uh, goes to a server that generates Lord of the Rings quotes passes that information and then sends an email to the person that booked the meeting in that says thanks for booking in a meeting to show off how Microsoft Bookings integrates with Power Automate here's a quote from Lord of the Rings generated using Power Automate flow uh, and just to prove how that's working here's the email that I just received when I filled out that form that says hi James Moore thanks for booking a meeting to show off blah 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 the quote is pretty simple my precious very silly very silly but just proves how that system works how you know not only does it integrate with 365 so i can send emails and things to myself but you can see here how you can build it out of third-party systems that will then allow you to do all sorts of other things so if you've got uh, a job tracking system a ticketing system a, a payment system you could then build that all out in power automate and build out some flows there um, communicating with clients or filling out checklists or however else you need to work so um, yeah, bookings is relatively simple, straightforward, and really good for booking in uh, meetings. Um, and then yeah, just like everything else in Microsoft 365, building it out into Power Automate can really uh, step up that automation and um, build out more of a streamlined process for more of your business processes. So um, that's about it. I think I'll wrap it up there. Um, if anyone's got any questions about booking or uh, Microsoft 365 or Power Automate, um, don't hesitate to, uh, to reach out. I'll put some links in the description.